It is impossible to imagine world literature without contemporary Arab authors. Literary critics, academics, translators, and publishing houses have long recognized their contributions. Numerous institutions are trying to promote them and make them more widely known. These include the Sheikh Zayed Book Award from Abu Dhabi, the International Prize for Arabic Fiction, IPATH, also known as the Arab Booker Prize, and the German Litprom Society, whose primary aim is to promote non-Western literatures. Nevertheless, Arab literature still has to contend with major prejudices and problems on the international book market. This panel, put together on the occasion of the Abu Dhabi 2022 Book Fair and initiated by the Sheikh Zayed Book Award and Litprom, asks where Arab literature ranks in the international book market today, what difficulties it faces, and how we can overcome them. So I say marhaban, or welcome to everybody in our virtual audience, and especially to our three panelists. Our first panelist is Iman Mursal. She's an Egyptian poet, essayist, translator, and literary scholar, and associate professor of Arabic language and literature at the University of Alberta in Canada. She's the author of five books of Arab, Arabic poetry, selections from which have been translated into numerous languages. In English translation, her poems have appeared in the New York Review of Books, Parnassus, Paris Review, The Nation, American Poetry Review, among others. A selection of Mersat's poetry entitled These Are Not Oranges, My Love, translated by the poet Khaled Mataba, was published in 2008 at Cheap Meadows Press in New York City. Another selection is forthcoming in spring 2022 from Farah Strauss and Jeru, translated by Robin Cresswell. Her most recent publications include Kefa Ta'al Ta'im, An Al Umuma Wa Ashbahiha, Kefa Ta and Mufradat, 2017, translated into English by Robin Mulger as How to Mend Motherhood and Its Ghosts, Kefa Ta and Sternberg Press. And Fi Athar Inayat Azayat, in the footsteps of Inayat Azayat, which is a kind of a novel or documentary novel, and has been translated into French by Richard Jacquemont, and uh, as uh, Sur les traces d'Inayat Azayat in Act Sud. The book was awarded the prestigious Sheikh Zayed Book Award for Literature in 2021. Iman joins us from Alberta in Canada. Hello, Iman. Then we have uh, Leila Shama. Leila Shama majored in Islamic studies, Arabic studies, and political science at Freie Universität, Universität or University in Berlin and in German as a foreign language at Humboldt University. She translated Arabic prose and poetry into German for a long time now, for like 25 years, more or less. As a language and cultural mediator, Leila offers bilingual readings and writing workshops, as well as translation workshops for children and young people at educational and cultural institutions. She has translated, notably, novels by Sahar Khalifa, Elias Khouri, Alawiya Sap and poetry by Abbas Beydoun, Qasim Haddad, Zakaria Mohammed, and I think also some poems by Iman Mersal. Um, Leila also has translated a book by Iman, especially this book, Motherhood and its, and its Ghosts, which is going to appear at Hans Schiller Publishing House. She's also the founder of Aleph Literary Agency, which tries to bring Arab literature to the German book market. Hello, Leila, and she joins us from Berlin. And then we have Lawrence Bolliger, who has been head of the fiction division with expanded responsibilities at Hoffmann and Kampel Publishing House since last year. After working for Amman Publishing House in Switzerland, Berlin Verlag, Sorkam Publishing House, and Dumont, where his authors included Mahsin Hamid, uh, Margaret Mazantini, Siddhartha Mukherjee and Carsten Stroud, 
Lawrence Bolliger was most recently responsible uh, program manager at Amazon Germany. Prior to that, he was editor-in-chief of the paperback division of Berlin Verlag, focused on acquiring international fiction. Among his authors at Dumont Publishing House include um, John Cheever, Michelle Welbeck, and Haruki Murakami. Lawrence also joins us from Berlin. Hello, Lawrence. And we have a translation into Arabic by Tarek Chelmaran, who is with us from Abu Dhabi. My name is Stefan Weidner, and I'm a literary critic and also translator from Arabic to German. I'm also speaking from Berlin. Our discussion takes place on the occasion of Abu Dhabi Book Fair 2022. We are recording it on March 23rd, 2022. I say marhaban, welcome to everybody. Sabah al khir to Oman in Canada, Masa al khir to the three of us in Berlin, and to our translator Tarek in Abu Dhabi. So let's start our discussion with, um, in order to introduce everybody, to our audience, I would like to get to know what you are currently working on. What are your activities with or around Arab literature these days? Where on the map of Arab literature do you see yourself? I want to start with Iman. It seems you have several books and projects in your pipeline. Can you tell us about them? What are you currently working on? What is finished? What will we see and read soon? And in which languages? So I, I have... Uh... Uh, I just finished a poetry book and it, it's coming after like 10 years from my last poetry book, actually. Um, and and the, it's a series of poems based on 19th century. And it, it took years because I was keen to change my position on writing poems and, and to uh, negotiate the uh, pronoun I, which is used a lot on my poems um, as talking about you know, personal and individual uh, narrative. So, uh, so this book is done, but I'm not sure when uh, it will come out in, in Arabic yet. Um, and the other project I'm working on is um, about ar uh, archive and the crimes. And it's, it's a kind of investigation of you uh, collective crimes in modern Arabic history. To give you just examples, I'm interested in a Qa'at al-Khuld event in Baghdad, 1979, and in the uh, sinking of uh, um, Salam Abbara in Egypt, 1998, uh, where 1,000 workers coming from Saudi Arabia to Egypt were killed. Uh, so the way I'm Interest. I mean, just to give you an idea, I'm interested in reading the archive and asking questions about it, about uh, accessing it, uh, about what does it lack, and um, and and about the mis uh, information in the archive. Uh, and also, I'm interested in language, how to talk about victims um, in in the archive in these collective crimes while actually you are the language is actually the spot where you see uh, them uh, uh, illustrated in the archive. So it's, it's kind of <laughs> a messy uh, uh, work so far. And part of this project is coming out this month uh, from uh, Hakave and the Kaifate, one chapter of what has been written already. Um, and it's called uh, or entitled Archives and Crimes. So can I say that there is a strong symbiosis between your academic work and your literary work that you kind of like to blur the boundaries between the two? Um, is that correct? I really don't think about it like genre uh, before starting to write. I mean, when you have a question about uh, a particular event you want to read, and you have to go to the archive and uh, and read testimonies and to see what other people are saying. The search is grounded in academic, you know, land for sure. But also, your questions it takes you to places that you did not, you know, uh, expect to be interested in while writing. So, nonfiction uh, creative writing, I think, is what I can call, you know, uh, it so far. 
And this is why there are so many genres um, intersecting with each other in this project. This is very interesting. We will come back to that. I want to turn to Laila. Uh, what are your current projects or translations, uh, Laila? What have you translated recently and what are we going to read soon? Can you tell us about it? Um, at the time being, I'm working on a quite new project for myself because I'm translating short stories of uh, uh, the Libyan writer Najwa bin Chatwan. It's uh, short stories about the war in Libya and uh, it's written in a very ironical and cynical way. So it's, uh, you can call it uh, black humor on uh, war. Uh, which is a quite, quite new approach, I find in, for myself or what I read in, uh, from Arabic authors. I have been working on uh, the topic of war since I started to translate Arabic literature, Elias Khoury, Palestinian literature, Syrian literature, Iraqi literature, um, Yemeni literature, and now this is a uh, quite new thing for me. First of all, I never worked on Libya, which is, uh, I'm learning a lot. First, uh, about the social and, politi social and political um, um, issues, and uh, also language issues, which is Libyan dialect is quite uh, difficult, uh, different from uh, what I've known till now. And also the way she is dealing with the topic of war. It's um, quite new for me and quite interesting, which makes you some kind of laugh about the, um, the um, craziness of war or the uh, absolute, because it's uh, really crazy what's happening. So it's not funny, but still she deals in a way so you, it, she makes you laugh or feel how strange things are and how crazy things are. Okay, so mm -hmm. let me ask you, how did you come across this, uh, these uh, short stories of the, this author? Actually, I had a bigger project with, uh, with a colleague. We wanted to um, introduce Arabic women or female literature to the German audience, and we were making some kind of uh, research. And then I um, discovered her, and I was quite um, very uh, fascinated by the way she's writing. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, when do you think will be able will we be able to read that in German? Do you have do you already have a publishing house or yeah, a date Hans of publication? Yeah. Hans Schiller is uh, ready, or he wants to make this book, and uh, I hope I'm working on it. But it's not easy to make uh, irony sound very um, funny. It's not easy at all, so I need to work and work and work on them, on the stories. But I uh, think that in autumn the book will be published. I hope Very, so. nice. Very good, very good. Yeah. Uh, for our um, non-German uh, reading public, I might explain that uh, Hans Schiele Publishing House is one of those uh, German publishing houses which specialize in... Um, Arab or maybe Oriental literature, if you may say so. In general, they have been active for more than, uh, I think, nearly 30 years. It was formally called um, the, the Arab book. Now it's called uh, Hans Schiele Publishing House, but the same publisher. So it's one of those, uh, uh, let, let's call it small, but specialized in very fine publishing houses for Arab literature. So that brings me to, to Lawrence Bolliger, our guest from uh, from the publishing scene, uh, he's an editor with uh, Hoffmann and Kampel, one of the most one of the oldest and most famous German publishing houses. Um, and uh, if I remember correctly, we have worked together, Lawrence. On uh, we we met first when when I did a translation of Adonis, and you were an editor at Amman Publishing House in Switzerland some some twenty years ago. Um, what has your contact with Arab literature been so far? Um, and, and do you have any current projects uh, connected with uh, Arab literature, maybe? Um, 
Thank you very much for inviting me, first of all. Um, I feel really honored to be on this panel with you, Stefan, and Laila and Iman, and I'm very happy to meet you all. Um, when when you told, told us about your book, Iman, I thought this is wonderful and we should be in touch because I'm always... I'm really always on the lookout for new voices and for new stories. And, and what I like um, is, is, is particularly now these days is a kind of genre bending because I find that, um, uh, that, that, that sometimes, uh, especially nowadays, novels can be boring and books that try to overcome, you know, too strict borders um, that transgress borders within their style, um, like a memoir that is a mixture of a novel. It, it, it tells us something that has happened, but in the form of a novel, I find these books pretty, pretty exciting. And I, and without, you know, a very conscious sort of decision, I, I often find myself, um, looking, looking for these kinds of books, although, and this has to be said, it is not quite easy to sell them, unfortunately, so far, but I'm working on that. And, it, it, you know, like many things, it just needs time. And then, Laila, when you told us about your book that you're translating and, and you said in the beginning that it was a project that you're doing for yourself, I thought, oh, how wonderful. This this seems like an, a project that is not sold yet, um, but it is, unfortunately, but I'm very glad to be in touch through this panel. You're in Berlin. I looked you up today and I thought... Um, I'll have to meet her soon. Um, this brings me to the answer uh, of your question, Stefan. I am <clears throat> looking around. I have just about two weeks ago, not three, before I um, uh, fell sick with COVID, I uh, had a very interesting meeting with a, a translator colleague of yours, um, Katja Halls, who translate from, uh, for, translates from um, Arabic into English um, because she was, you know, put in contact um, because I need um, her to write a, a reader's report on an Arab book that I would like to know more about because I can't read Arab. And um, I'm, 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 I'm very excited about getting her reader's report. And we met and I said, can you recommend me authors? Can you re recommend me books? I'm looking for, you know, contemporary books be it novels or memoirs or a nonfiction, narrative nonfiction book that bring the Arab culture from wherever they might come closer to us and, and to our readership. Because we have a readership um, that still needs to be educated. I, I, I kind of, when people ask me, what, uh, what, is your, what is your task? What are you looking for? I'm, I'm always telling them, I am, you know, I, I like to refer on, on something that Samuel Fisher once said um, that I learned from Egon Amman, uh, you know, Stefan Egon Amman, the late Egon Amman. He, he always told us that Samuel Fisher said it is the most noble and most important task of the publisher to bring new values to the public and values that they don't want. So we're sort of educating the public as well, and we need to bring them new values, but we also need, of course, we also need to sell because we're still a business. Um, and when I look for Arab, new Arab voices, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for content that can transport to here and to the individual experiences of, of our readers. And um, this is something that I wanted to discuss in, 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 in this group. Um, often when I'm on the lookout and somebody tells me about an Arab story, it often seems a bit too far away from, from our context, which is obvious and, and should not be criticized in any way. But I'm hoping to find those topics or those stories that can be more easily transported. Um, for example, Katya told me about a, a very contemporary author. And uh, when I looked, you know, when I wanted to, to know more, it seemed that all her stories were told as fables. 
and even though that is very interesting and also genre bending, it is something that I just know that I will have difficulty selling, um, first of all, within the house and then also to a bigger audience. And um, when I want to sell, when I want to translate something from Arab literature, I, I, I want to reach a big audience and make a splash and educate and bring them something new that they can identify, that they feel um, that they feel at the same time educated, but also uh, that they have a good time reading the book. So at the moment, I have no um, no project from this uh, from this language, um, but I am looking and I'm very open and I hope very much that we soon find something because I've ha I'm having you know books from Danish from from Hebrew um, and I also would like to talk about um, but but this is on your on your list anyway, Stefan. Uh, what we need as editors who don't speak the language, what we need um, to have in order to discover. Wow. Thank you very much, Lawrence. Um, that gave us a lot of uh, input. Um, let me uh, let me go back uh, one step and um, and uh, imagine s some simple reader uh, who has not heard much or read much from Arabic literature from Arab literature and um, and he or she asks you Iman uh, but why should I read Arab literature? What is so special about it? Uh, why would I want to read it? Um, what would your answer be? It, it might be, it might seem like a stupid question, but it could be interesting, you know, to find answers to that one. So from your personal point of view, what, what would you answer? What can you recommend? I actually wouldn't recommend anything. <laughs> I mean, um, this position is problematic anyway, right? I mean, it, it's usually you, uh, maybe I'll, I'll imagine another scenario, which is more common. I, uh, I saw in my teaching and in my readings around the world and so on, is that someone will come to you and say, oh, uh, this is not the kind of poetry I am expecting from Arab, lit uh, Arab poetry. So, so here I would think what what do readers uh, expect from Arabic poetry or Arabic novel or Arabic female writing or whatever, right? And, and this will bring us really to completely different problem. Uh, is Arab literature represented in uh, what you call world literature or not? So, so it takes us there. So maybe if I met someone telling me, why should I read Arab uh, literature, I would ask him or her, what do you read? Because this is a good question too. Because uh, people, uh, lots of people love literature, but for them literature is European and North uh, American literature or literature is, uh, which is written in particular language they know, right? So so actually it's a problem uh, that, that people, um, Lim lim limit the concept of literature to a particular uh, language. And it's usually a first world language, right? I mean, uh, even world literature it itself it is really, for me, sometimes looks like uh, uh, the, the literature available in English to read for, for people in, in North America, for example. So it's, it's available in English. It's what... A Western literature canon selected from uh, elsewhere, from authors originated elsewhere to add to their canon. That's all. This is world literature. So I think it's much more complicated than just recommending few books to someone. So, so maybe you could just answer because it's good literature or because you like to read literature and it's literature like any other literature is also. 
um, maybe uh, I don't know, Leila. What what would you um, or let me let me put it another way? Um, what fascinates you about Arab literature? Why do you do that? I mean, now once again, I imagine somebody who is um, a bit uh, maybe not too close to that field of um, of of preoccupation. So, if somebody asks you, why do you do that difficult job which is badly paid? What fascinates you? Um, actually, one very important that this is what Iman said as well. There is some kind of image or um, that kind of uh, image of Arabic literature. But actually, what fascinates me about Arabic literature is there is no Arabic literature. There are Arabic literatures. So Arabic literature is not one thing which you can define Because for my in my vision or my opinion, literature is not related. Of course, it's related to a certain uh, culture or language, but it's also related to individuals. It's not people who are Arabs are writing the novel, but it's uh, certain people, individuals writing uh, books. So it's a huge. Um, incredible big amount of books written in very, very different styles, very different topics from different areas about different people. So it's very, very rich. And for me, what this is the first time I'm working on Libyan literature and I'm discovering new things which I never knew. So even I'm working, it's more or less than more than 25 years working on Arabic literature. Now I'm I'm discovering new things, so it's worth to discover. You are never, you never finish learning, so you just keep on going and uh, discovering new things. This is the most fascinating thing for me. So it's the discoveries, which I think uh, uh, leads us back to to Lawrence, who is also. Uh, if I understood you well, uh, Lawrence, uh, trying to discover new things and then to present those discoveries or to educate a larger public with the help of those discoveries. But let us talk a, a bit more precisely about the expectations of a publishing house, especially a German publishing house towards Arab literature. The expectation in terms of you already described that you are interested in uh, like some cross-border literature, which is crossing borders between genres, for example, um, but also, um, well, in terms of um, not only of content, but also of commercial success. What is your, what is necessary for an Arab book to be published in your publishing house? What would you say are the, what, what is the, the, the necessary things you would, you would ask for or you, you need um, a very good question, Stefan, and, and it touches upon the core and the problem that we also are faced with. Um, but I, I would like to also take up what uh, Iman said and, and Leila with respect to Arab or Arabic literatures. Um, it is huge. It is a very, very big field. And that also makes it probably more difficult for us to actually find something within this huge corpus um, that is not only huge in terms of geography, but also in terms of history. I mean, we can go back and discover, um, let's say, Arabic classics, you know, like the one that um, Iman wrote a book about and, and her author, right? And Ayat Sayat. Um, that might be also an interesting book to, to be translated in, into German because it, it brings us a time and place, Egypt in the 50s, uh, written from the viewpoint of a woman, um, a close that we have no idea whatsoever about, or only specialists. Um, so what we need is we need an interesting topic. We need a beautiful way of narrating the story, bringing, bringing us the story close, um, a good style. But we also need saliability, of course. We need this kind of not only transgressing within a style, let's say, but also we need to be able to make the step from a culture that seems to many people still kind of far within 
our own culture and bring it here. Um, and that is why I found it so interesting that Katya told me about um, an Egyptian writer who now lives in Berlin and writes about, and London, uh, London uh, especially, and writes about his experiences um, within, you know, the new surrounding, but um, written in Arabic. Um, and I found this interesting because this could be this kind of bridging the gap the gap that we need to close. Um, and when I try to find a, a book, um, be it, you know, from Hebrew or from Spanish or from English, wherever, um, I want a book that, that manages to bridge this gap and bring newness into the world at the same time. And what you said, Iman, about um, the Western, you know, superiority, let's say, I, I find that more and more you know, uh, struggling. I struggle with that because um, because I also have the wish of finding, let's say, literatures or novels from South Asia or from this huge continent of Africa that we have almost nothing translated into German. And how am I going to find those? Of course, I can just wait for literary agents to bring some some of these books to me. And then they're mostly written by somebody um, who sits in the United States or in the UK and writes about, you know, long forlorn experiences, but without no direct contact. And um, this is why I have contacted more and more Indian um, uh, publishers who I know because I've studied Indian literature at university and I've uh, translated quite a few or published quite a few Indian law authors and, um, and also publishers in Africa. And they told me that even there, in their markets, the situation is so that most of these books um, that have been you know, successful in the United States or in the UK, then make it and are successful in the South Asian continent or in Africa. Um, and and I want to start, and I mean, this is this this needs a lot of work, and this needs also a, a lot of sort of engagement. But I would like to um, go to the sources more and bring literatures from where they are actually happening, and that is exactly what I what I'm trying to do um with with uh, arabic fiction and non-fiction um i have started to be you know to contact egyptian publishers for example where i know from from fellowships and and i'm hoping leila that we can start you know working together and maybe man as well um because we we just need we just need more information and the more information we have about a book or about the writer and their experience the, the better we can we can see whether it whether we can imagine this book to travel into German and into the hands of our readers. But now now you describe one step. This is a step from um, a given book or a given text having been written in in Arabic or maybe another language and how it comes to you and to your publishing house. But then once. You imagine it published or it is published. What is what is impeding Arabic literature? Where are the hindrances? Where are the problems once you have a book? Because sometimes I think there's a lot of enthusiasm like you have in publishers. Yeah. Yeah. Publishers, they want to do that. They're, they're really earnestly interested in that. But um, then um, maybe they publish something and it doesn't become a success as they expected or um, or they they are, they get close to publishing this, but then in the last moment they won't. So where where's this this decisive little last step from just being interested and making a book a success, bringing it to the readers? Where, where's the problem there, which which I don't see in maybe in other languages? Yes, I, I try to be short now. Um, of course, you know it, it would be it would be fabulous if we could all be like Egon Aman and just have, you know, po poems by Adonis translated in beautiful editions or Mahmoud Darwish as well and, and from other languages. Big, big expensive poetry tomes, but we can't do this anymore. And now I think everybody is looking for something like Allah Aswani, the Yakubian building, which was a huge success here. Um, because, and I think that story just, or that novel just came at a time and at a place where 
somehow everybody was ready for it. And because it was told in a voice that people here had no difficulty in, in, in adapting to. Um, I have already mentioned before, probably in, in my first statement about, um, you know, the thematic gap that may, that we may have if, if, if a novel is stems in the sort of Arabic tradition, and you all know this much more than I do, um, it can often feel too far away. And then it is difficult. We can translate it and we can, of course, promote it, but we won't reach many readers because it will just, there will just be the last step is difficult to take from a thematic point of view, or maybe from a linguistic, because it is told in a very, in a strange story, for example, I, um, Katya told me, uh, uh, sent me a story that was written, um, you know, from the view of a hand. And, and, and this is, this is, this might be a very, you know, grand literary undertaking, but it is not for the big, uh, for the big audience, and and then it will be very difficult for an editor like me, even if I love it, um, to 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 actually get it through all the different, um, you know, all the different de decisive decisions in within a publishing house, um, which is also the, the the book has to be, you know, very able for PR. It has to be very able for distribution and so on. But we know that. I mean, these are the constraints the publishers have to um, have to work with. And it is our task to find ways around that. Um, but of course, some books are easier to to transport within in into the market than others. Um, Iman, when you hear that, what what were your uh, experiences with? Um, with uh, Western publishing houses. I mean, you have been in the business for, yeah, let, let me say 30 years now. Uh, how did your, how does your literature get to, get get published in English or in any other uh, European language? What are your experiences with that? I will answer your question, sure, but I wanna just to, um, uh, because I was listening, I, I, I understand completely what uh, Lawrence was saying about a book that can travel, a book that can find its readership. I understand completely that uh, literature is, is, a, is an economical object as well. I mean, there is a publishing house industry, and, and even if you want to take a risk, uh, one time you will not take this risk every time, otherwise the publishing house itself will disappear, right? So I understand this uh, fully. But I have maybe some uh, questions about that. Uh, one of them, for example, uh, if we are expecting uh, books that is easy, uh, are easy to, to travel, as you said, or to be read in German from Arabic literature, uh, we'll keep uh, translating almost the same exact kind of books. So it's great that Alal Aswani is well read in German. It was well read in Arabic too, by the way. So it's great. It's it's really um, part of the literary scene. It's, uh, it should be translated and read. But there are also other work that might need lots of work because it's not as easy as uh, Jacobian building. And and if we can invite these books, at, I mean, from time to time, even this might actually change what is a stereotype about what we consider the Arabic literature. What I see as a problem now with publishing houses, with with all of my respect, of course, to the industry, is it's more likely to translate a book that can work as a, a social document. Or, or social and in, format in about a whole society, a panorama, for example. Um, it, 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 translations also um, sometimes are what I called in my study uh, uh, emergency uh, of translation. Like there is a war here, so we should translate books very quickly, uh, civil war, uh, uh, uprising, um, crisis of refugees and it goes on and on and this crisis will not end by the way 
at least in our life. I mean, this is one of the things we all, we all know. So also, actually, this emergency of translation could be fine because there is an urgent political question that we have to address in so many layers. And one of these layers is reading a book about whatever is going on somewhere. I agree with all of that. I think my anxiety usually is about why there is no, how can we widen, you know, um, some space, create some space for experimental books written in Arabic literature today from everywhere in Arab world, from Iraq to Morocco, uh, to be translated to, to have converse, conversation between writers uh, and not to limit our conversations all the time about society, uh, women, wars, uh, political problems, and so on and so forth. So this was just my uh, comment is that this is our hope by working all together to do that, to, 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 to create this space, third space, <laughs> out of East and West and the crisis and so on. Talking about uh, my experience with, I mean, I am originally a poet and the poets are not translated actually. So I never understood why I'm translated. I felt all the time it's, uh, it's kind of uh, God will to do this. And all of the translators of my poetry came to my poetry by their individual experience and, and reading. And then one of them is uh, you, Stephen, when you translated some of my poems without knowing me. Um, I heard from you for, for the first time when you translated some poems. So, um, and it's the same experience I have with every single uh, publication in uh, in English or other languages. However, when I started to write nonfiction, I found it completely different because suddenly you are very attractive like to a wider audience and uh, of course for a bigger readership and also for publishing houses. So it's, it, it looks amazing. However, I have one experience that I wanna talk about when publishing houses, house, I'm not going to say even which language, read the translation of an Zayed book in, English, in French and asked it to translate uh, it to their language. But they said in, in the very first email, uh, we would like you to take out some of the details about uh, the history of publication in, in Egyptian culture and um, we might take also some about the uh, Persian law, which was, you know, against Anaïta Zayat in her life in um, uh, taking custody of her son or getting even divorced. <laughs> so, and some other things. So they are proposing to translate the book, right? We, by taking some of the information that are not important to the Western reader. So I was asking myself, what the Western reader is interested in then. I mean, and, and, and yet, as, a yet, as a young female writer who committed suicide, this will be a very cheesy story because the story is visiting so many uh, fields from law to mental illness institution to, do you know what I mean? And I was asking myself too, when I sit and read Zibald, the German writer, who is one of my favorite writers, by the way, I'm, I'm a member in his cult, I consider myself. <laughs> so when I read Zibald, it's not an easy reading for me. When I read Russian, uh, classical Russian literature, the idea of names, just names, how many names a person can have, might need some, uh, need some effort from me to sit and read. So what attracts us to literature is really this universal experience coming from individual writers. And, and a writer is rooted in his own culture and history and memory. So if I have a question about the world, I'm interested in world literature. And I should be patient when I'm reading a, a novel uh, or a nonfiction book or a poem written from somewhere else. Because, I mean, as long as there is something real in it that attracted me enough to continue reading despite the difficulties. So back to Lawrence, uh, really what I wanted to say basically is 
I agree with everything I understand it, but how can we open this third space to allow, let's say it's a cheesy uh, say to say, but good literature, good literature, like literature that, that is really uh, good to read, despite all of the difficulties, despite that it's not easy to travel, despite that we will not have thousands of readers waiting for the book. So before I give the word back to Lawrence to answer, I would like uh, to ask Leila, because she has um, a large experience in trying to promote literature from the translator's point of view. And also you founded an agency, a literary agency called Aleph Agency, specialized in, in, uh, in promoting Arab literature. How were your experiences to get your, the books you translated, the books you, ch you choose, the books you like, to German publishers. I mean, at least you have published uh, a whole list of very famous authors. Was it the publishing houses who came, which came to you to ask you to translate it? Did you um, introduce the publishing houses to the authors? How how is the process? How has the process been for you, Laila? That's many questions. So I would like to I would love to uh, answer one question or say something. I think it's. Matter, it's a big, big, big problem, and it's a matter of images and expectations. And we have a big gap between what does, uh, at least I talk about Germany, what are the images we have about Arabic literature and what kind of expectations we have. So we have very strong images, and these images go back to the Middle Ages. So it's really a very deeply rooted images we have in Germany or in Europe, in Western Europe, about the Arab world. So, and the publishing houses, I find they are kind of in a contradiction between we want something new, something new, unique, and we have images and we want to confirm what people expect and what they have the images they have about literature. So what I always hear is the book is too far away. This is what publishing publishers always say to me. This book is too far away for our readers. So If you bring a book which is uh, quite modern, you have in Arabic literature, you have also very modern style, you have more old style, you have all kinds of styles. When you offer something which is quite modern, experimental, yeah, this is quite similar to ours. We not, don't need something like that. So you are always in, this is too far away, this is too close. So you just ask yourself what really, what's, The problem, what do you want? And I think what publishers do is they are kind of like uh, try to talk. They want something new. They want to present something new. What you said, Lawrence, that you want to educate people as well. But at the same time, you want to offer something which confirms the expectations. So the publishing houses try to be to uh, argument from the point of view of the readers. And I don't know if there is the reader, because every person, this is, reading is also like writing something very individual. And people are, and there are a lot of interested people want, which want to learn something new, um, get to know something new, but the publishing houses, On one hand, they are interested, and on the other hand, they close the door because they are afraid. And also, kind of, what's the problem about Arabic literature? I think there is a political, they are, publishing houses are often frightened politically because they think there is something political not correct, there is some anti-Semitism, there are things political, Islamism, so there is a huge um, burden on Arabic literature, even so this is also the fright of the political situation or the political um, statements which are probably written in books or not, not 
On the other hand, there's a lack of trust towards translators. You need us translators to present or to, to uh, uh, introduce books to you. But on the other hand, you are frightened of us because you don't know from which point of view we are working. One a lecturer said to me from the publishing house, yeah, we need you, but we don't trust you. Okay, so do your job alone. You don't need me uh, if, if you say something like this. So there's some kind of we want and we don't want from the publishers in, in, in Germany. And sometimes I feel when I'm in readings, in uh, public readings or events, that the public is much more often, uh, much more um, not often uh, open, open. Yeah. much more open than the publishing houses because the publishing houses, they are always frightened um, because also, of course, there's the economic uh, dimension. They don't want to uh, fail. And there's a big responsibility. I understand every, I understand your position, Lawrence, as a publisher. But on the other hand, you want to uh, um, um, step on the gas, and at the same time, you step on the frame. Gas and frame at the same time. So this is quite difficult. To okay, there's, there's a double bind, but I see, Leila, I mean, uh, this is, uh, you, you have an impressive list of authors uh, published and translated. Yeah. Um, so so uh, to, to talk about the positive, um, to, to talk about the achievements you have, uh, what where, where's the where's the point that something works out? I mean, you just describe what doesn't work out, and I think I can share this experience. It's also my experience. But where's the point when it works? I mean, what is? Uh, can you describe it, or can you get to this point, Leila? Actually, it works only, um, except with Hans Schiller, because if I want to do a project which I love, I go to Hans Schiller because he's the only one who accepts new projects. Other books were published because there was a French or English translation before. So the German publisher looks what's translated into English, what's translated into French, and if it's successful there, we'll do it here in Germany. If it's not, not no success, so they will not do it because uh, there's a lack of, um, I'm negative again, um, okay, they just uh, need the experience of other languages like Duacamp, like other big publishing houses. They need to have the confirmation or the, um, the success of the books in other languages. There's uh, a lack of adventure to try something new, to translate directly from Arabic into German. So they always need the uh, the, um, yes, yeah, the detour uh, via other languages. Yeah. So, so is it like that, uh, Lawrence? Is the German publishing or like the German publishing houses? Are they um, are they afraid? Are they not? Don't they take the initiative on their own? Uh, are the other languages are publishing houses in in France or in in England or in the US? Are they more progressive? Oh no, I, 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 I no, I, that I wouldn't say. A publishing, I mean, in Italy, in France, and in Spain, we have a lot of translations as well, but not as many as in Germany. Um, we, we in Germany, it is, it is the book market in the world that does the most translations. Granted, most of these are from you know primary languages like English that we know or French. Um, it already becomes quite difficult with Italian or Spanish. Um, look, I've, 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 I will publish a book in um, in August translation from from Spain from a Spanish book that I love very much. Um, but I, as an editor, I'm a lover. I discover a lot of things that I love. Then within the publishing house, there are constraints that editors face um, because we have to transport these books, first of all, not to the public directly, but within the publishing house. And often within the publishing house, there are colleagues 
who I like very much, but whose task it is to say no, because they know that we cannot calculate. And um, even, even the biggest love of an editor um, sometimes just sort of faces a wall. I have read um, a wonderful uh, short story collection by a uh, Urdu, uh, by an Urdu writer called uh, Ali Akbar Natik. And one of those stories is called A Mason's Hand. And it's a wonderful story about a young man um, in Pakistan who decides um, he wants to make money and he, he goes uh, uh, to, um, to, the, uh, to the Gulf region, I think it is Saudi Arabia, and, and he works there and he comes into difficulties. And at the end, his, his hand, the hand that he's always worked with as a mason, is cut off. And that's the end of the story. And all of these stories have this kind of very, very political um, message that is important and they're told in wonderful Urdu language. Now, uh, presenting this book, of short stories from Urdu. I have tried it, but the, you know, even, even as the most loving editor, um, you will face the problem that, um, that within the publishing house, and understandably so, your colleagues will say, nobody knows this author, the translation is difficult uh, and, and will be very, uh, very costly. And um, it is short stories and booksellers don't like short stories. Now, obviously, when I talk to friends of mine um, and ask them whether they like short stories, stories, uh, they, unfortunately, um, they tell me, uh, not really, I like to have a novel, you know, that I can delve in, that I can spend much more time with. Um, and so that's why I, I mentioned the genre also in the beginning. Um, if, if, for example, this, this book you mentioned, Laila, um, from Libya about war and, and war, it, you know, as it commented in, 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 in a humorous way, that is, a, that is also quite a known way. Let's, let's, I mean, for example, um, this, I forget the name, um, but there is a tradition of books that um, take war on in a very humorous way because, because it is the only way that you can, you can write about horrible things. Catch 22. That's the book I meant. Um, these these difficulties are within the house and they're they're dictated by the market and of course we can reach a third space i love that concept ever since homi baba mentioned it and and sort of celebrated it as a sort of a hybrid possibility um and i think often for literatures like the arab literature uh, small publishing houses achieve doing that, but then, of course, they do not reach a wider audience. And that is the problem. That is why in a bigger publishing house, where is more money and probably also a bit more power, we can reach a bigger audience. But then we have to face constraints that probably the small ones do not have. But, um, but I have to say, Lila, that I, I do not, I do not, I, I look for something new. Um, and yes, I look for something that is translatable in the sense that it is not too far away from the individual experience of our readers, that we can transport within um, their individual to the universal experience. But I, I have to say that I find your accusation that, that we as publishers are looking to confirm images or expectations too harsh, at least in my book, I, I try to not do that and, and not confirm images or expectations that we have. But, but obviously, there is, this, there is this difficulty of, on the one hand, um, economic constraints and on the other hand, bringing newness in, into the world. So one problem, obviously, is, is money or what you say is economic constraints. Um, but uh, and, and there are a lot of initiatives which give money, for example, to translations, which give money to authors like the Sheikh Zayed Book Award, which has also, I think, uh, a section for translations from uh, from the Arabic. And uh, you have um, societies like the Litprom Society, which gives money to publishing houses or also to translators. Um, but um, it seems to me that e despite those activities, it's 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 not 
it's not enough to be the tipping point. Is that correct? So do you need more money or is um, it not I a don't, question I, of money I, at if, all? But we know how to get, I mean, if we have something that, that we decide in the end to translate, we will always try to get, you know, subsidies for, for, for translation, obviously. And most mostly it, it works. Um, I have a I have a Russian novel on my desk, for example. It's 800 pages, and I consider it one of the most important works within the last contemporary years in Russia. It won two big prizes, and still, and and I think the translation will be paid, but we still have to take the risk first. Um, so money money is not my my first issue. My first issue is is I think information. Um, if if I had more sort of more information on what is actually right now happening um, in contemporary Arabic literature. And if I had sample translations that give me, a, because I can't read it, either in French or in, or in English or in German, that give me a good chunk of, of, of possibility of reading that I can delve into. And that I have not only one you know, book offered to me from, from an agent or a colleague of mine who's done that in France or in, in England, but maybe 10 or, or 15, and then I can compare and I can discuss it with my colleagues and then choose one or two. And then if it works, go from there and take it from there and then and then open up this 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 possibility and open up this third space also in bigger um publishing houses like iman iman says um that would be my wish absolutely because because really yeah. at the present moment and and obviously i'm not an expert in arabic literature but it's still a very sort of blank page and i think a lot of a lot of what is missing is not in the first place money, but money enables us to get more information. But it is really the information that we need. Because agents from the US or from the UK, they send us stuff every day. Um, but we, it is very rare that we get something you know, from Cairo, let's say, um, or, or from Beirut. That's that's very interesting because it it puts us on a on a more um, positive or like uh, a track where we which we can follow uh, to end up really promoting Arabic literature better. So you can say information is the big issue, which I immediately understand. So we could, for example, say why let's not set up a fund or some money for um, like an agency like like uh, the one by Leila, the Aleph agency, which tries to promote Arabic literature so you, that you get more possibilities to offer, to promote, to, to make a short report on certain books. Um, so what we, what we need to, uh, to promote is the step before even translating before even publishing um can you can you see that leila or uh, would that be a way to to get along to help you and and arab literature that's this would be wonderful because my problem in the agency is that um this is on my personal account and uh i well i and, and I used to write reports and make uh, translations so that the publishing houses uh, get an idea about the book. But um, also for me as a translator, you know that translators don't really earn a lot of money. So it's also a economic, an economic issue for me. So I can't always offer, offer, offer everything on my personal account. And not selling a lot, really. So this is also for me a very uh, economic um, issue, and it would be wonderful if there would be some kind of fund, so to get uh, support from an institution or uh, just do this work, so you could really concentrate on uh, promoting Arabic literature, which is not really possible under economic uh, pressure. Very good. Uh, can you relate to uh, to this topic, to the idea that we need, at, before we really start to translate and to publish and to change the image of Arabic literature, that we need more um, information, uh, Iman? Is it 
does it connect with your experience somehow? Uh, I really can't speak about this at all. Like my experience from as a writer is uh, is different. It's usually, mm -hmm. yeah. My experience as a writer is is limited, and or I see the whole thing from my position, right? So, so it's usually um, a translator who uh, read an individual translator and then search for um, a publishing house. Uh, and this might take years or a few months. I mean, every, every book is different and so on. However, when I started to have an agent, just an agent based in, in US a, a year ago, I just felt it's a good idea not to think about about it anymore, like no, not to deal with the details of it. But having like kind of a database even to describe new books, to uh, translate just uh, samples of their bo uh, this, this books to different um, languages. It could be just a website. It doesn't have to be a huge, uh, in an institution uh, standing behind it, like it's just uh, uh, collective, you know, really activity to, to talk about books you like in English, for example. I mean, read in Arabic and write about it in English. Um, uh, this could could be useful. I, I just want to say that agency here is not just the institutions and agents and publishing houses and writers themselves. Uh, we might dream of a platform that can bring all of this together where people can exchange uh, information and ideas about what they are reading. But this is uh, this sounds to me like a very good project to set up a, a website which uh, presents uh, which presents works like this and which maybe also actively uh, addresses publishing houses um, identified by people like Leila or me or anybody else to be interested. Um, um, that brings me to maybe our last point is um, how do you, Leila, how do you, um, how do you do research uh, in, uh, in Arabic literature? Because this is what I find most difficult is that you have more than 20 Arab countries. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, the the different difference in language although you ha you have this high arabic uh, official language still the individual languages by individual authors differ widely so and and then the the this publishing scene is not very professionalized it's not uh, you don't have a good you don't have reviews of every book and so it, it's very difficult to get into it in the end you end up it's always by chance that you find some this or that or it's just friends who tell you so um is there a way to to get well it's a jungle it, how, how you how to cut through that jungle uh leila what is your experience okay of course uh the arabic world is a huge huge field and my interest is to promote literature which is not really very much known. For instance, in Egypt or Lebanon are quite well known because of historical reasons and uh, relationships between Europe and countries. But for instance, like uh, countries like Sudan, like uh, Jordan, at the time when I was quite active in Syria, Syria was still not, not at all known. So um, I used to go to, or I traveled to uh, Jordan and uh, had some kind of um, uh, people who are uh, professional, like uh, publishers and uh, literary critics, uh, critics. So I used to go and uh, collect books and read, 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 and make my list, which I found which would fit for German people or uh, public and discuss these books with the literary critic and the publishing house or the publisher who were quite well into the, um, the field and which was important for me that these people are independent. It's not uh, talking of uh, an author maybe is interested to be published. So I tried to look 
for people who are independent and into the um, into the field of literature. So we used to discuss, and then I made my list which which books I would like to uh, present. So this was the way I I work. But this is really needs a lot of time. And yes. Needs, yes. Uh, Very good. Uh, Lawrence, um, just imagine you have just published uh, uh, an Arab book which by an author which, who is not very well known in Germany. So what do you want from, um, what, are the, what, what difficulties will you see and what chances are there? Do you, do you, will you do an advertisement campaign? Will you, uh, will you address literary critics to write about it? Will you go more through the bookstores? And what is the most important thing for you to get such a book through amid all those publications which we have yearly in Germany, which are so many? It depends very much on the book. Um, let's say the book has a very sort of pitchable hook um, that is has commercial appeal. We would probably, um, you know, position it as an, a lead title or an important lead title, or because it has a provocative thesis, let's say, or it's a provocative novel. It could be a lead title, and then it gets a lot of marketing. Unfortunately, not every title within a list, um, either published in spring or in the fall, gets as much marketing as the lead title or the lead titles. Um, then there are those titles that are, you know, press more important for the, for the literary critiques. Um, if, they're, if they're more literary, if they, if they can only be understood, if you read about them, if you discuss them, then, then they would be, you know, the so-called so press titles. And, um, and we see that still, if, if a book, um, you know, is a, is a strong press title and it gets a lot of reviews, um, it might win a prize, it comes on a short list or it, or, or, or it is on a monthly, you know, list that from, from a newspaper or a magazine, that works quite well as well. It, it, can, all, it can also be, you know, very surprising. And um, sometimes one of these titles might even be more successful than one that you put a lot of marketing into because um, it hits the nerve. But this is you can you can only guess it's it's just very difficult at at really planning something um uh, which is which is the reason why i'm i'm trying to look as 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 widely as i can and if i find something appealing um from any kind of point be it language wise be it topical um be it because there is a very interesting author behind the book um a story that we can tell about a person um these these might be various reasons and then and then we would we would sort of flank them by uh, you know by 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 marketing or press or or booksellers um booksellers you can get if you do a reading a reading copy um that is a galley probably man you you understand as a galley that we give away to booksellers before the publication of a book that often helps um if there is if there is a lot of emotional sort of emotional power within the book and you can get the booksellers to love the book and then to promote to promote the books in their in their in their shops there are there are various possibilities and 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 i would say um to come back to what we talked about before stefan and Laila and and, and uh, iman these what is important is that we get more information and um in my experience it always helped me also to know people from let's say that world that we're talking about in in the case of the arab literature arabic world um if i if i know more publishers i have more possibilities of being in touch with them and and to meet them at book fairs and to have them recommend something to me that i then can give to a reader or a translator and get their uh, that get their readers reports because i need that but i need the personal the personal contacts and that is also something that we can probably 
strengthen. And, and I know that obviously uh, we're doing just that right now, and I'm immensely glad for it. And um, I, hoped, I hope one day to be able to go um, to one of the countries where we have talked about um, to get in touch with more people and to, to get their recommendations, because it's a people's business, our business. And, and if I have something like uh, somebody like Iman or Leila telling me about a book um, that they are fascinated with, uh, or you, Stefan, then, then I will listen more closely and I will give it more, more attention. And, and, and that is the already first and foremost and probably most important step. So information, personal contact, exchange, this we will, uh, we will note. Um, let me tell you one very precise question. How many copies would you need to sell to, to call a book a success, or especially from Arab literature? So now you, you, for example, you, well, you dare to publish something which you, you're not sure it will, will a success or not, but how, what is the limit you, you would want or you would need to sell to, to give you a good feeling? To, 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 to try it once again. Can you, can you say that? Or is it a secret of publishing house? No, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's an open secret. Um, Go tell us. But if, if we have a book and we have, we have managed to get, you know, the translation subsidy and, and it's, not, uh, it's not too big a book and it, it has a price that we can calculate with, I would already be happy with, let's say, you know, between four and 5,000 copies. That would already be a very, very nice, small success. And that would definitely um, give me within the house and everybody else the chance to try it again and, and take it from there. Um, because the one book, to publish the one book and, and thinking that right, right from the start we'll put 30,000 copies out, that will not happen. Or it is, you know... A lucky coincidence, like with the Jakubian building, where it just worked, or or then you have a book that becomes a world phenomenon, like uh, like the, like the book that um, uh, from from Italy, um, the 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 Napolitan saga. Um, what's her name? Um, probably one of you knows. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember the name. But Surkam no. published her in Germany, but only after it had become a huge success in the US. And I'm not saying it also needs to be, it always needs to be a huge success in the US. We can do the same. Um, and I think we should be less dependent um, from the US uh, anyway, or the UK. Um, this is this is a kind of neo-colonialism that I cannot really support within publishing as well. Um, but there is there is a book that these these books exist and obviously it's it's lucky but um, it's not what we can calculate with therefore yes to answer your question i would say as i said before um three four five thousand that would be marvelous already yes that, that's good to know so my last question goes to iman uh last year you got this uh prestigious and and um well well uh Dotated price um, in in Abu Dhabi. Did that change uh, anything for you apart from the fact that it gave you some money? Um, did it this does do initiatives like those enormous Arab prices help beyond the fact that uh, a given author or translator gets a lot of money? Does it help to promote? Does it get more attention to Arab literature? What what is what was your experience? What 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 do you think went well, and what you would would what would you wish to get improved in the future? In that sense, I really think it uh, it helped the readership of the book a lot. I mean, the book was well read when it came out. It, it was published. Um, I mean, three publish uh, publications when it got the award. But after this, I felt the readership also. Change it geographically because, uh, as you know, in even in Arab world, when you publish a book in Egypt, it might be well read from Lebanon to Egypt, but it doesn't mean it will be read in North Africa or Gulf states or or so on. So I think the award promotes the book very well inside uh, its own culture. First, uh, I'm not sure if if it helped the translation of the book. I never get any um, yet. 
I never got any proposal for translation because of the award until now, which is very weird for me. It was a few people were translating to different languages already. And now they are stuck looking for publishing houses and all the same. So I'm not sure if this will impact the publication in other language in future or not. I hope it will. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Um, we have talked for more than an hour. Um, um, thank you very much. I think we uh, gained a lot of insights and uh And after um, seeing this or after having had our discussion, we know better how to promote our literature. And I think each of us will try his or her best to do that. And we uh, will ask Litprom, Shahzad, Bugabat, and any other institution to help us doing this by uh, giving us more information or money to generate information, to generate translations, to help authors, publishing houses, translators, and everybody who is interested. Thank you very much. For your attention. Thank you very much for your participation, Iman, Leila, Lawrence. Um, Thank thanks you, to everybody. <laughs> And I hope to see you in one of those famous, wonderful Arab book fairs. Yes. In the soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I, this, is, you. this is just the beginning. This is, a, this is an initial step. It really um, opens, opens up a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.